What is up, Kitty's special guest today on the Yo Boss podcast because she refuses to go to sleep by any means necessary. Today, we are talking about RSI. RSI. We're going to go over quickly what RSI is, definition wise, textbook wise. We're going to explain some cheeky ways to use it that most people don't. And we're gonna give you a little secrets, a couple of secrets along the way to help aid your trading gains um, as a whole. Um, let's start with first the textbook definition of RSI. As you guys know, it's one of the most popular trading indicators out there. Okay, it's talked widely on CNBC, Bloomberg, a lot of technical analysts, hedge fund guys, um, portfolio managers. They all love to use RSI because it's a very basic metric of measuring whether a stock is overbought or oversold. Now, as you guys know, RSI moves on a zero to 100. Um, data metric point when it gets below 30 it's oversold when it's above 70 it's overbought okay now RSI measures the price change and momentum in that price change so say a stock goes from five dollars to five dollars and fifty cents it's measuring that price change okay and the momentum it's not measuring volume while volume drives price action it's not taking volume and data metrics and calculating that within its formula to show you whether RSI is going up or down it's just measuring the price um, and if it's moving upward or downward over the course of a 14 day period most of the time. All right, so we're gonna go into the top three ways that you can utilize RSI to better help you in your trading if you are a beginner or intermediate. So let's start things off by going over divergences. So a divergence is of course when you have a structural disparity between price and the indicator. As you can see right here, on the indicator you went and you made a lower high. Meanwhile, on price, you made a higher high. And this happened again right here. You can see price once again set another lower high in succession. And then you got this drop. Now this happened again over here. Made a series of lower highs while price was making a series of higher highs. And you got that downturn. Moving over again. Price made a series of higher highs. Meanwhile, it was setting a bearish divergence with the lower highs on the indicator itself. And that ultimately led to another downturn. Next up, taking the exact same section from the S&P that we just went over regarding the divergences, we're going to be showing you how to use Fibonacci. Yes, Fibonacci retracements, you heard that right. You can use Fibonacci on indicators, and I'm gonna show you how. So starting off here at this local high, just as you would on price, Go ahead, you draw it straight down to this local low, draw it on over, and you can see that the bearish divergence, that first one that we just went over, actually coincided with a move to the golden pocket. And you can see this repeat over here across all of these bearish divergences. You went up past the golden pocket, up into that 707, the 786 range for ultimately rejecting back down both on the indicator and on price. You can work this to the upside as well. You go from this local low all the way up to this local high. You can see you came down and you consolidated and accumulated down here on the golden pocket. Okay, third and finally is launch pad zones. Now, one of the most interesting things about the RSI indicator is that when you're reviewing the repeating fractal and algorithm, it picks specific uh, price points in the RSI indicator. It could be a 40 level, it could be a 45 level, it could be a, a 68 level. Wherever these moments are that you can see where there is a continuous point of confluence where the indicator bottoms or tops at these moments and the uh, security makes a violent move in phase D and E and Wyckoff that is the area you want to keep focus on. If you look at any chart, especially the memes, they have a zone and a price data point within RSI that they love to launch from in those final phases of one. Now, Darren's gonna take you through it with more specifics on the S&P chart that we were currently using. Here we go, so jumping right into it, you can see when you're reviewing the RSI indicator, you can see that you don't exactly bounce directly off of either the oversold or the overbought, you have those levels in between, right? And those are the launch pad zones. So taking this one, for example, you can see that each time the S&P hit it, now it's not foolproof, and this is why it's important to try to master a single security at a time. You can get to know its behavior on the indicators, RSI, MACD. Uh, you can see 
that each time you came down and you hit this 36 level, it correlated with getting those quick bounces almost every single time. So you should use this in Confluence or standalone with any of your strategies or your trading systems. While there are over a thousand indicators that you guys can use on TradingView or any of the other charting platforms that you have access to, just make sure you are focusing on the absolute basics and fundamentals. RSI is one of these. If you guys have any questions, ask us in the comment section, shoot us a DM, whatever you guys need, we are here. That's it for the educational section for today. Yo boss, out.